you're a producer, this is probably the scariest sentence to hear. And if you have been to my channel, you know that I'm on a mission to make your love and as good as possible. And you know what? Answer to your love and issues is a single word. It is called Piddle Pass. The first letter P is for the phase. Contrary to popular belief, checking out the phase of your track is super duper simple. So I have a patch here, but I did low pass around 100 Hz. So we are only hearing the sub area and then I have a yielding loudness meter to visualize the loudness of that sub end. In a perfect world, the bass volume should be same all the time. The initial bump is just the envelope. So straight line. When phasing happens, the waves goes in and out of phase. You can simulate this by playing the phase in serum. Let's say bring down the phase a little bit. So this one is flipped version, the original one, and do something like that. So we are changing the phase. With the phase going in and out, you see that this volume variation up and down all the time. The more you go in and out of the phase, the bigger variation that you will get. Completely out of phase, half in and out. In some cases, we get even silence. There's a bit more complex variation in the sound. So in your first checkpoint, what you are looking for if you have something similar like this in your track. Bring in an EQ8, put it somewhere around 8 to 150 hertz, the most problematic area. Bring the Ulimp loudness meter, put a mono after the EQ8 and see if I can see these jumps in my own track. These big jumps are most likely due to empty spaces that we hear. If you take a look at the shape, it's very non-repetitive. So weird things are happening here. We have these big jumps and there's a big tell of phasing issues on your sub. I have pigments over here. I actually have two voice unison. So these two are coming in and out out of the face and giving this like variation in the volume. Take this off and take a look at our chart. Straight ahead, we see that the variation is much less. We still have the variation. It is due to the high end of the bass here. We have another layer. There's also stereo coming in and out, but this is something that we can live with. A bit of variation is good, but when the variation gets out of hand, that is the problem. And that was the case in the first example. So this is how you check your face. I have a whole video over here just about this phasing issues. If you want to go deeper, take a look at there. Sorry for hijacking the video. At the moment, we have up to 40% discount on my presets, sample packs, my full-time courses. If you want to give it a try, take a look at mercurialtones.com. Number two, the dynamics. Before we start with the dynamics, I have to drink my drink. This week, it's not coffee. It's a special thing that comes out during the Christmas incident. It's the Yulmust. Acquired taste, but it's cool. So, dynamics. To check your dynamics, it's important that you pick a track that has similar low end to yours. In this case, I'm picking my own track, Too Far. Similar bass, not exactly the same, but this will do. If it is similar, it is good enough. First, it is already normalized to 0 dB, so I don't need to do anything there. Put the same EQ8, 100 Hz, so I'm looking at the dynamics of the low end of the reference track. Do you see it? Kick. The bass hits. Kick. I can say that when you normalize your kick to 0 dB, your bass should be around minus 3 to minus 9 dB. Do the same thing with my own track. I see that my kick is not 0 dB, so what I'm going to do push everything so that kick ends up with the 0 dB. So when we push the kick to 0 dB, we see that our dynamics is not really looking like our reference track. Our bass is much quieter than the kick. The one thing that you should be remembering that our reference track is actually mastered. So we have to push our track a bit more too. But if you're taking kick and bass from like intro area, that will probably won't be too much compression. So I'm not going to go super aggressive. I'm just going to push like 1, 2 dB. But if you are taking your track a bit more the chorus area, then your compression should be up to the 6 dB. Let's take a look at it again. Unfortunately, we are still nowhere near. So what I need to do, go back now and get my bass similar levels. Here you can actually play with your ear and pick a range that you like. Because I want to give a bit space my later on, I'm not going super aggressively, but I brought that up between minus 9 to minus 6, similar to the reference track. A bit quieter, but it's very similar. Super simple. The loudness level. Because we fixed our dynamics, what you are looking for now, the size of your low end. Just follow the similar concept. In this case, in Ulin, click on the S function over here, integrated loudness level for your low end. If I play, it will go up, up, up and stabilize. And we are hitting minus 10 LUFS for our low end in our reference track. Let's do the same thing with our own track. As you 
can see we are actually louder. Now, even though we are dynamically less loud, overall size of our bass is much bigger. But the difference is only one LUFS, so it's not huge. So in this case, you can be, yeah, this is fine. As long as you are in plus minus 1.5 LUFS, you are actually fine. This also depends a little bit your reference track. So if you have a very rare hit with your bass, but your reference track is just constant bass, the reference track will always have much higher LUFS than yours. So keep that in mind. If you are seeing this, you are probably enjoying the video. Please consider like and subscribe because it helps a ton. This one is super forgotten and it is super easy to deal with as well. The biggest problem that I see with the Ligner, they make their base for once and they just copy paste everywhere. It's a really lost opportunity. You can alter your pattern slightly to make your track much more dynamic. One of the hardest bass type to create variation is a rolling bass line. It is super tempting to use the same bass all the time. One of the easiest ways to create variation in your pattern is actually adding accent depending on where you are in your track. The easiest way to visualize is actually using the colors. Focus on the variation. Here I have the accent bass. What I'm doing is at the intro I'm using it a bit less because people will be listening much more closely to my driving rolling bass line. So when they start to get bored of the driving baseline, I want to put more and more accent bases. And this is also an easy way to control the energy, right? Because we are getting more intense. And if we go further, we will see that variation tree even more intense, like even more hits. And this leads to this beautiful low end. So whenever you are done with the arrangement, just remember the pattern. Have I done anything to make the pattern more response to the arrangement that I've created? When you answer that question, yes, then you are good. Like pattern, automation is another thing that you have to keep in mind all the time when you are making bass lines to create your bass line much more expressive. Here, under the sub, we actually have these weird lines going on for my driving bass line. What I'm doing, starting heavy, going down a bit, and then going back up again around the second bar, and again around the fourth bar, and finally around the eighth bar, I'm slowly ramping up, leading this very really expressive low end. Right, and here. It's a simple macro, just opens up the cutoff and opens up a bit for the decay as well. Right? So without, we have this. Let me also take the accent so that you can just hear. expressiveness. Now, when you add the automation and the accent lines, do you see how the bass actually react to the drum hits, like Tommy's dum dum, and the bass is top right there. And we chill down right afterwards. So, when you are finishing your track, the question that you should be asking, have I considered automation? important. And the final step is just looking at the stereo image of your low end. Contrary to popular belief, I really don't suggest making your low end mono, because then you lose a lot of excitement. But what you can do, like we did earlier, take a look at what you have. If you are very stereo low end, you may end up with the problem, but if you open your stereo end gradually, then you may live with it. Listen to this bass before I show you the stereo image. Feels very open, very spacious. Now take a look at the imager. It looks very tight. What's happening here? If we saw the low end, take a look at the very lows and how mono they are. We are very tight. And if you take a look at the low mids, ah, we are starting to open up. And then we take a look at here. Now we are really utilizing the image. And if we go all the way up almost nothing but the sides. And this is a super simple way to tricking your ears to believe that I have a super wide bass line. So the final check is, take a look at if you have a triangular shape, if you have a stereo bass with your low end. If not, at least take a look if your low end is balanced. If you solo your low end and your stereo image showing something like this, 
you may consider making your lomat a bit tighter, a bit more monos. And once you pass all these different stages, and if you take all the boxes, I guarantee you, your lomat is fine. Nobody will be blown out of the window due to your heavy bass, or nobody will be complaining because they can't hear your sub bass. At least it won't be because of your production skills. If you want to learn more about music production, I have another video over here. Take a look.